Hello and welcome to the in-depth series of Drishti IAS. My name is Pooja Devedi. Do you know yesterday was National Cancer Awareness Day? It interestingly coincides with the birthday of Madame Curie. On 7th of November, she was born. Her important researches helped in the treatment of cancer and that is why it is celebrated on her birthday. We will talk about Madame Curie today or Marie Curie today. A Nobel laureate, not once but twice. Let's first of all look at the various topics that we are going to discuss. Apart from these, women in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, that is STEM, will also be understood from the perspective of their, their you can say, percentage of presence in India. What initiatives has the government undertaken to ensure more uh, participation of women in STEM? And what are the issues related? Okay. Let's move ahead and talk about Madame Curie. Marie Curie. Actually, her name was Maria Sulema Sklodowska. She was born on November 7, 1867, in Warsaw, Poland, and died July 4, 1934, near Solanches, France. She is famous for her work on radioactivity and she is twice the winner of the Nobel Prize. She worked with Henry Bacquerel and her husband, Pierre Curie. In 1903, she was awarded Nobel Prize for Physics. She is the sole winner of the 1911 Nobel Prize for Chemistry. So, two Nobels she has, one for Physics and one for Chemistry. She was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize and the only woman to win the award in two different fields. So, so much she has achieved that it, is, it becomes extremely important to understand that are women really not, you know, not worthy enough to be in the field of STEM? Moving ahead, first of all, let's talk about her early life and education. Now, at the age of 16, she won a gold medal on completion of her secondary education at the Russian Lyceum. She was a protege when she was little. As a teacher, she has worked and at the same time took part clandestinely, that means secretly, in the nationalist free university leading in Polish to women workers. Then she took a post as a governess. When she earned through that post, she helped her sister to study for the to pursue further studies, thinking that she will get help from her sister in the future. Now, in 1891, Sklodowska went to Paris and there she changed her name to Marie Curie. Sklodowska worked far into the night in a student quarters, Gare, and virtually lived on bread, butter and tea. Very struggle, very strugglesome her life was. She came first in the license of physics sciences in 1893, where she worked with numerous important people. As we can see from Pauli, Bohr, Einstein, Schrodinger, Dirac, Heisenberg, Lorenz Planck, and uh, at the Solvay conference, she is sitting as the sole woman among the men. So it's important that we understand how hard and difficult it was for women. Right now, we see it is so hard for them to be representing in elite groups of men. Let's talk about the time then. In 1894, she was placed second in the license of mathematical sciences, where, of course, we could see romance blooming between her and her husband, uh, later on, her husband. So, Pierre and Marie Curie, they married on July 25th, 1895. They discovered polonium by their union. So, discovered polonium, so that it was called polonium, so called by Marie in honor of her birthplace, that is Poland. In the summer of 1898. Then, a few months later, they got their hands into radium. Now, if we talk about radium, its discovery date is written over here 1898, discovered by Pierre and Marie Curie. The name is derived from Latin word radius, which means ray. The atomic number is 88 and stayed at 20 degrees Celsius is solid. Boiling point is 1500 degrees Celsius, melting is 69 and 696 degrees Celsius. Relative atomic mass is 226, cast number, everything is given over here. If you want to have, you know, a quick shot of it, it was your chance. So, its appearance is like a soft, shiny and silvery radioactive metal. And its uses are few right now because it is highly radioactive. And radium-223 sometimes used to treat prostate cancer. That is why I talked about National Cancer Day. And it has spread to the, uh, that has spread to the bones. Because bones contain calcium and radium in the same group as calcium, it can be used to target cancerous bone cells. 
it gives off alpha particles that can kill the cancerous cells. So that is why birthday of Marie Curie is celebrated as National Cancer Day in India. Radium used to be used in luminous paints, for example, in uh, clocks and watch tiles. Although the alpha rays could not pass through the glass or metal of the watch casing, it is now considered to be too hazardous to use. Now, radium has no known biological role. It is toxic due to its radioactivity. Moving ahead, uh, before that, before we move ahead, radium is present in all uranium ores, could be extracted as a byproduct of uranium refining. And Democratic Republic of Congo and Canada have the ores which are richest in uranium. Moving ahead, let's talk about how her, we can say, theories and researches helped to understand how everything works. She started working on thesis on radiation. But because uranium was discovered by Henry Bakkerin, all right, and she found that the ore containing uranium was far more radioactive than the content of the uranium. It was 400 times more radioactive than uranium. So she understood that there is something going on. The ore is much more important, she thought, than the actual content. In 1898, it was added to the periodic table as polonium. Okay, and this was known as radiation phenomenon, where the ore is much more radioactive. Curie discovered an even more radioactive element, radium. Radiation wasn't dependent on the organization of atoms at the molecular level, but on something happening outside of the atom. This was her research. The atom was not inert, invisible, or even solid as believed by the scientists back then. Now, Moving ahead, Pierre died in 1906 due to an accident. But in 1911, she won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry as she continued her research after her, after her husband's death. She got this Nobel Prize in recognition of her services to the advancement of chemistry by the discovery of the elements radium and polonium, by the isolation of radium and the study of the nature and compounds of this remarkable element. This was all, also a slap in the face of those who told that in, uh, when she won her Nobel Prize in Physics. It was said that she was working as an assistant of her husband and Henry Bacquerel. But later on, Pierre Curie said no, she has an equal, if not more, than equal contribution in their research. Even after Pierre died, she continued her work and she won another Nobel Prize. Moving forward, let's talk about certain drawbacks of her research. She did not fully appreciate the dangers of the radioactive material and because of the work that she, she and her husband did they were constantly ill because they were you know suffering from radiation sickness as they were exposed so curie's death in 1934 was likely caused by radiation exposure and a few of her books and papers are still stored in a lead box because they have been exposed to radiation and it is fitting to say that curie left a scientific legacy that is literally untouchable nobody wants to get exposed to radioactive materials. Now, she ensured that radium is promoted to treat diseases and during World War I, assisted by her daughter, Irene, who was going to win a Nobel Prize, future Nobel laureate. Marie took over Pierre's teaching position at Sornborn and she was the first woman to teach there. She did not accept a widow's position. The physicist Rosalind Yallow, in an essay wrote, at the time of winning her own Nobel Prize in 1977, for research involving radioactive compounds, saying that Curie was her inspiration. So this is her legacy. Now, countless awards, hospitals and research institutes have been named after her. Significant increase in the number of women involved in STEM has been registered because she was the guiding light in their path. Moving ahead on the similar topic, World Bank data showed that in 107 out of 114 economies, there are fewer females than males, STEM graduates. Globally, 18% of the girls in tertiary education are pursuing STEM studies. Women prefer to study life sciences. This is one of, one of the findings of the study. They are less represented in majors like computer science and mechanical and electrical engineering. Here only we need to ensure that they have more presence. Worldwide, only 33% of researchers are women. Women account for just 22% of professional working in artificial intelligence. And even uh, you can see 28% of all engineering graduates are women. Nearly 43% of the total graduates in STEM are women in India. This makes India to be in a better position. It is one of the highest in the 
world. There are certain other initiatives that the government has undertaken. Now, first of all, we have to understand why does this happen? Because there are uh, certain things that are very stereotypically entrenched into our system, not only in India, I'm talking about the world. That women as primary caregivers should devote their time more to the research in the household work, but not STEM. Also, there are other certain, uh, you can say, discrimination that is prevalent at the university level. The patriarchal attitudes in awarding grants, fellowship and hiring practices also work against them. Pressures to conform to societal norms, that there is a mould. You have to ensure yourself that you stay in the mould. Don't try to move outside the mould. You have to ensure that you have to be a mother, uh, um, a you know, daughter-in-law, a wife, but nothing more than that, maybe. Household responsibilities and stress related to marriage and childbirth are also some of the issues. Moving ahead, let's talk about initiatives that have been undertaken by the government to ensure that women participate more in STEM. Vigyan Jyoti is started by the Department of Science and Technology. It creates a level playing field for the meritorious girls in high school to pursue STEM in their higher education from the roots. The Gati, the second one, Gender Advancement for a Transforming Institution. It is a comprehensive charter and a framework for assessing gender equality in STEM and it is working well with knowledge involvement research advancement through nurturing Kiran that provides a knowledge base to the women who want to participate in uh, you know the field of STEM. So this was started way back in 2014 and 15. Now let's move on to our question for today. What is the atomic number of radium? 98, 88, 23, 39. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.